Okay, here is kind of the quick and dirty lecture for gravitational force one, day two. And normally we would be doing this as a Pear Deck lecture, but just because we got behind, um, I'm gonna do it as a regular lecture and probably put it into Edpuzzle. So the first thing I want to ask is, um, imagine I'm in front of the classroom and I drop a tennis ball and I wanna know why does the ball fall? So fundamentally the ball falls because there is a force of attraction between the earth and the tennis ball that causes the ball to fall. Or there's an interaction between the tennis ball and the earth that causes a force on the tennis ball to pull it down. All right, so now you wanna listen very carefully. I have two tennis balls sitting on a table and I want to know whether there is a gravitational force of attraction between the two balls. So if the two balls attract each other. So if there is a gravitational force between the two balls, could we observe it? This is so unnerving. I'm used to like having comments and with people. All right, so the answer to that, the quick answer is yes, there is a force of attraction, but we can't see it um, because first of all, the motion is probably extremely small because the force of gravity between the balls and the table is much larger. Sorry, force of friction between the balls and the table is much larger than the force of attraction, gravitational force of attraction between the two balls. So that's why we don't see them move because the friction is so large. But we can set up an experiment where there is no friction. And um, this was done by Lord Cavendish um, in England. And basically he um, had two balls that were on the end of a stiff rod. And this was suspended from the air are suspended from a, um, a narrow piece of line. So the only thing preventing the motion of this rod from twisting was just the kind of anti-twisting force on the string. And then he put two very large masses next to them that would at attract these. So the idea is that if there was some attraction, there's nothing really impeding this motion, they should move towards each other. So Cavendish did this and he found out that you, they actually do attract each other. So I'm gonna post the link for, for the video that you should definitely watch. So if Atlas drops a tennis ball from one mile high, does the tennis ball exert a gravitational force on the earth while it is falling? So does the tennis ball exert a gravitational force on the earth while it is falling? So the answer to that is definitely yes, and we can um, figure this out by looking at a schema. So we've got the tennis ball, and we've got the earth, and we know that there's an interaction between them that is called weight, and what that tells us is that we have the weight on the ball by the earth that is kind of like this side of it, but this side is the weight of the earth on the ball. So in other words, there is a Newton's third law pair demonstrated by this interaction. It goes both ways. So the earth attracts the tennis ball, but the tennis ball also attracts the earth. So does that make sense? All right, suppose Atlas goes to lunch and he drops an object the same mass as earth from one mile high, what will happen? And I think the short answer is, is that they will be equally attracted to each other. And so they're both going to move between, or move towards each other. They're going to crash, but they're gonna crash exactly in the middle because they have the exact same mass. So they have the same force of attraction, just like the tennis ball in the earth has the same force of attraction. But in this case, um, both of my objects are the same mass. And so they're going to um, move equally. The attraction is all the same, or the force is always the same, but the motion varies. So here they're going to move equally because they have the same mass. All right, so suppose Atlas drops an object the same mass as the moon from one mile high. Does the object exert a force on the moon, or does the object exert a force on the earth while it is falling? And again, the answer is still yes. So we have moon, 
we have Earth. There's a force of attraction between them that we're going to call, actually, we're going to call this the force of gravity because you don't really think about the weight of the moon. We call this the force due to gravity. And it is an interaction. The Earth is attracting the moon. That's why the moon is falling. But the moon is attracting the Earth. So, our recap. Gravitational force, it acts at a distance. It is always an attractive force. Um, it's a two-way action. In other words, it's an interaction between two objects. It penetrates a vacuum or other matter. Um, you can't, uh, the vacuum of space, there is still, the, we still attract the moon. The Earth still attracts the moon, even though um, there's a vacuum between the moon and Earth once you get beyond the atmosphere. Um, gravitational force seems to work for both large and small masses. Um, F, there's no simple intuitive model that has been found to explain the gravitational force. We just know that it exists and we kind of use it to predict things. There is homework. Okay, I think that's it.